What's up, people lovers? We will analyze the games of Teddo versus Liri in the Red Bull Vololo Legacy Finals. Obviously, best of seven there, so six games to analyze. Spoiler alert. And we could technically jump into the game, but actually, a series starts before that, namely at the draft. Liri and Teddo, as we all know, Liri, uh, micro beast, very aggressive. Teddo. Uh, more on the strategic side, tries to play wild maps, wild strategies, and that's what we see in the band. Northern Isles, water map taken away from Tado. Well, I want to reduce the music sound a bit more on my end. And Tado obviously tries to ban a super aggressive map, bans at Akama. Also, Ben Viper wanted to do, but screwed something up on his paper and couldn't really ban Atacama. That's maybe if you want to rewatch that Viper uh, Viper's reactions there. And then Liri obviously goes for wild, or not wild, but aggressive maps, Arabia. Tato goes for Schultz, lots of water play there. Outcrop, something that Tato had a good strategy on. Acclivity, another Liri map, Morass. Kind of a tweener between both of them. I think also wild strategy is possible, but tough to wall early on. E lots of easy aggression coming in bull also very strategic map and in the end Leary gets two choices and bans and closed excites that frigid lake will be the opener i think that's a very reasonable choice i think in closed lots of sif wins possible as well mm. you pre prefer empire wars or normal empire wars for the action i think normal has the advantage that you can also scout I, I wouldn't be surprised if the plus six will be the future. So I think we will move this somewhere to the top now and then take a look at civilizations. Is that an option? Uh, and I think let's make that way smaller. Mm. Okay, good that I prepared any overlays here. So those are the maps, and we take a look at the civilizations now. Uh, ban Saracens away, makes lots of sense. Leary bans those away from Tado, and Tado bans Britons. Not the craziest civilization, but Leary likes them more than they are strong. So uh, I think that makes lots of sense to go for that. At sex, Leary directly jumps on those, considered to be one of the strongest civilizations. Doesn't really matter on the map. Tado goes for Mayans, the other Eagle Civ. Kind of doesn't want to allow Leary to go for the two strongest stiffs there. Franks, a bit surprising to me. Um, maybe something that we can ask him. Not considered by me to be a top four, top five pick. But wanted to play a really aggressive Arabia apparently. Byzantines, the pick. Where did it go? I don't even know. But obviously lots of counter potential. Can be played on Bull. Can be played on uh, Acclivity. Frigid Lake, Arabia, lots and lots of options there. Hindustani, crazy civilization, no big surprise. Tatars for Tedo also loves that. That was for Outcrop, his choice. And Bulgarians for Moras. Cumans also can be played very aggressively, can be played on Inclivity, can be played on Moras. Also an option to play them on Arabia, Outcrop. So lots of diverse uh, options. Bohemians. Crazy Leary civilizations with his archers, with his crossbows. Gojara is good. And, well, Chinese was a big surprise for me. Didn't really see the really? value in that one. Sub ranking gone, Neely feels man. Uh, oh, yeah, I can add that again. Paul Dancer. Um, Lithuanians, really late pick there. I was a bit surprised. And then Turks taken away. And Italians, really late pick there as the backup for Schultz. Gojaras could have been for Schultz as well. As well as for Frigid Lake, although we have Khmer for that. And Liri goes for the other Mesosif. So all makes kind of sense. And we now could technically open the notepad here and try to distribute civilizations. That's what the pros are doing, right? You go for Frigid Lake, uh, Moras, and yada yada. And then add your stuff. Like it should be Khmer versus... Now I should have remembered what we had. And it was it Hindustanis, right? And then you just go through this and try to change your civilizations. Try to adjust to your opponent there. But that's all said and done. I think we can just jump into the action here. Uh, camera on or camera off? I think 
especially with all the pauses that we are doing we can do some camera action here although my green screen isn't properly set up but now we can go there right and let's just go uh, Liri went for Hindustanis obvious choice because you want to um, uh, you can easily go for scouts crazy good camels and then Khmer kind of needs to go into pikemen and castle age and you can switch into Gulam. the moment you get into Gulam, you kind of win Proceus notes yes uh, isn't it way easier to on something Excel or Google Sheets? Uh, yeah, in total you use like Excel or Google Sheets for sure, but for only this one set, I think people mostly use Notepad. And obviously they were writing it down in front of themselves and didn't have prepared stuff there. So both open stable, obviously impossible yes. to wall the map very early on. Yes. And therefore scout opening makes lots of sense. Trying to pressure, trying to get some map control here. Elden Nero, thanks for the shop as well. Wouldn't think there's enough data to justify needing to use spreadsheets. Oh, there is, there is, trust me. If you have played lots of sets, lots of combinations. Um, yeah, Kimura, as you all know, great choice. Because you want to build those farms everywhere. You cannot farm around that area. And... Hinostani, good for, because of their camels and their gulam. And obviously, cheaper villagers. Uh, I think we can fast forward a bit. Scouts are trying to find some damage, but that's not a lot of strategic stuff. Um, for single set, set though, no. No, no, no. More as preparation. And then try to work with this preparation. And this is, I think, the major mistake of Leary. He has two spearmen, sees the two scouts moving away, and those scouts needed to be here and here. Right? Especially Frigid Lake, we said it. Tough to wall the map. And therefore raids become really, really strong. We want to zone out stuff. Khmer don't need to do that that much because we have the houses to jump into, right? Lots of villagers are often easily protected. Those villagers could have benefited from another house here. But I think this was the major problem here for Liri. And he builds more of those houses. And has to go for those small walls. Right? And small walls are good. If the opponent never gets archers and if everything else is protected. But Spearman out of position and Tato finds quite some kills here. The text without bloodlines but has forging. Therefore obviously villagers are going down a bit easier. And well we are trading off quite some stuff. But as mentioned Khmer are just way better in those situations. Tato keeps villagers on gold. Macro slipping quite a bit here. So not the perfect scenario here for sure. But... Good enough because it is messy and finds lots and lots of villager kills here. Eco KD, as you can see, 3 0. Leary, obviously, being Leary, finds a lot of quick walls. And Leary now 6 on gold because he goes onto archers. And the first aggression. This is actually pretty crazy defense. I, I was really scared for Tedo here. Mm. But obviously, scout upgrades are good, right? Forging, bloodlines. Really? So numbers are looking In pretty good. Some sad. universes, 31 greater than 30. Okay. Now the market for Tedo sells his wood. Doesn't sell his stone. Now goes for armor. And I was really surprised. I think Leary, the thing is also, if he's walled here, right? And basically only is open at the bottom, his spearman position could be completely different as well. Only three spearmen. Did Leary not scout the second stable? He scouted the second stable. I think Leary needed more spearmen. Or second stable himself. One archer range. One stable. It's not the perfect counter to double stable. We need to go full spearmen here. And obviously armor better for spearmen than the attack. Because most of the attack is coming from the extra damage anyways. Where do we want to sit? Defensive tower here. Therefore going to the top. Tato even bought himself some stone. And is defending this while being active in the back. Seven villages ahead. And Tello gets a pretty solid hold here. Spearman running onto the, under the tower. And Tello looking good here. So I think Leary needed some more Spearman. And certainly after all the army was here. And it's confirmed. Needed to rewall here. And I think this is the main reason that cost Leary the game. Tello even goes for third stable. Doesn't have gold, needs to free this area. And that's the difference that we said, right? Can save some villages and houses. Can't save all of them, though. 
And now the raid is coming back. And that was a ballsy move by Tato. Just at his two towers there for the defense. And he is back while Liri completely at the front. Five villages ahead. And Liri, he simply refused to build a tower, right? One tower here could have helped. The tower here could have been an option. And just continues to have some losses. And now pulls all his army back. And this is the moment the crowd really cheers. <laughs> uh, because they realize, okay... This is now looking really good for Tato. Simply because Leary will lose all of his advantage. Goes for more scouts. And yeah, just look at those random houses. Look at this market. Right, his, all his army is back. Why not send this villager war here? But I will just repeat myself. And this will be the main thing that will cost him the game. He's still putting himself into a good position to come back though. Hard to explain why Leary wasn't fully warded at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was a mental blockage in some form. Uh, clearly needed to do that. And now scouts are constantly raiding, constantly overrunning. 15 to 6 KD. Uh, and Tato's economy obviously completely great. Oh, very good. Yeah. Uh, my green screen is a little bit open. Over here do we need to cut it a bit more? Okay. And... Yeah, I don't think that you... Well, you can somewhat see that Shadow is exchanging resources. Scout harassment continues, therefore the later castle age is not a problem. Going for a dock here doesn't make a lot of sense because people have just so much army out. It's so easy to kill the fish. You can go for some here, but very easy to raid and probably won't pay off. Yeah, Livery was making so much army, but he didn't have the mobility, right? Because he was playing against full scouts. Uh, but Tato is 25 villages ahead here. Honestly, kudos to Leary how well he put himself into the position of maybe getting into a comeback, right? Because this is should just be over. But obviously, that's what we said also earlier. Hindustan is incredibly good in Castle Age with camels, crossbows. Tough to fight against that. Tato, Scorpion use wasn't the greatest here, I believe. Yeah, yeah indeed. Monk's trying to help out, Tato being pushed back, Demos just putting some fear into the head of the opponent. Hmm. Yeah, Hindustani the will, getting the will count back. I think Liberty was on 3GC tiny bit earlier as well. And now he's finding some damage. Really well played uh, by Liberty after this, but he obviously was too far behind early on. Now retreats after he sees, okay, I forced a lot of reaction. Let's try to sit back. TC4 on stone. Maybe, just maybe, getting to comeback mechanic, the third TC could have been at stone as well. But it's so tough to say for me. I ah. think this is game one in the books for Tato. Not much else to say. 21 villager lead still and that should just be statistics economy look at that how many more resources Tato got in this game yeah that tells you the story and even if you wall not much to do I think it all came down to the hole at the top yeah okay let's watch Arabia then Arabia was game two. Lithuanians against Franks. That was surprising to me how well that went for Tato. I did not really watch the early game. So we can figure this out together. Should be double stable opening here. Yep. Oh, this is a mistake. You never want to have... This should be one tile further. You can see, for example, Jordan never built a building next to the wood line. It's always here and then he tries to wall the building next to the wood line just to avoid traps like these. Oh, just pulled away from gold. Liri keeps one on gold. Makes semi sense. I think if you have one, it should always be on this mine, but okay. And now a scout opening from both sides. Neither player can really afford eco upgrades. We see the wood upgrade here. Though we are starting with 150 extra food. 
No farm upgrade afforded. And now we see more walls. But Liri still plays it relatively open. Scout's coming around. And probably want to mute the game behind, right? Options, audio, mute on focus lost. So you don't hear everything twice. Sorry for the annoyance in game one then. Some harassment here, but Spearman can block this one off. And there should never be a real advantage at this point on the game. Four Spearman forced on both sides. More scouts, now goes into more farming here. And Tato uses the deer, while Leary didn't spawn deer. And Emmons didn't realize. Yeah, 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 and now I remember. Now I remember. Ooh, and that's a major difference. Right, Saru gets three full deer. That's an admin It should have been. Yeah. But players and admins didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Uh, now takes the big fight. Bloodlines is in. Plus one attack is in from both sides. Tato wins this. But still, like, this should not really be decisive. What is decisive that the economy is just so smooth for Tato behind this. He can go on to berries. And will be up a bit earlier. While now being, after fully being walled. Although he should be fully walled here. Loses one will. HP pretty even. How are we three builds ahead? Leary killed one. Wheelbarrow. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. Obviously, this should never happen. And a one minute faster castle age timing. And this mainly came down due to wheelbarrow, not having deer, and having to invest into bloodlines. Tado now goes into even more scouts. The strategic reason for this is obviously for uh, to snipe some monks. Very likely that both players will go into some monks. Let's take a look at the vision from both. Tado not the greatest scouting. Uh, Liri not the greatest scouting, I mean. Tado neither. Monastery being rushed. Texture Town Center being rushed. Now we go for the gate and go for some knights. And Liri's pushed back a bit. Has lots of resources to go up though. And gets the eco upgrade still. Pretty even in all regards. Now double monastery though. Okay. This is a completely even game for now. And if we go to the late game it feels like Lithuanian should be better. Right, this is still the moment where Franks shine. And Leary cannot add extra town centers. How is that a thing? We have the wood upgrade. Huh. Resources. Oops, uh, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Thank you for this. Resources collected. Leary is 900 ahead. Mainly gold, food. KD's 1515. Lyric got three more builds. Free farm upgrade. Okay. Three extra deer. Even double monastery. It's crazy. Larry built too many farms. We're at 17 versus 17 right now. Obviously, some already expired. This is interesting. Monastery laid, wall amount is similar, units built should be similar. I think Leary has the gold upgrade and Tado doesn't. Hmm. He had more food collected without deer? Yeah, he built farms earlier. This is really surprising to me. How can we? And how much would the Tato reach Castle Age? K 
Okay, Leary even did the wood upgrade. Uh, so Tarot reaches Castle Age with basically 450 woods and double stable. And Leary reaches Castle Age with 85 wood. And he didn't reach seed farms. Nine on wood only here. Where did all this wood go? In the whole time to Castle Age, we had five on wood. Now went for walling. Yeah, I think building farms on the way to Castle Age might have been the mistake for Leary. Right? We're on the way to Castle Age now. Sent lots of villagers on gold. Oh, so Leary an eco imbalance here. And now builds the second town center. Well, Tato already has all three. Ooh. That's interesting. And Tato, while he ups to Castle Age, had 20 on wood. Those on berries went dry. 20 on wood, 14 on farm, 6 on gold only. And Leary had endless amount of villagers on gold, right? He had 12 on... So... Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So Tato realized that mass villagers on gold won't actually help him that much. He just went really heavy on wood. Extra town centers, double monastery, and then the town centers should carry. Interesting. Huh. Second mining and gold upgrade, yeah. Now monks are faster. Oh, this is incredibly complex. Huh. And now Tedo is 13 villages ahead with an army lead. Leary probably didn't expect the double monastery play. Uh, did it all come down to those three deer? Hmm. Like 10 volts because of Uberro? Yeah, I can see that argument, yeah. Hmm. Lacking horse color for all those farms. Affects everything. Maybe, right? Because Leary needed to reseed. Okay, let's see after the castle click, how much reseeding do we need to do? Because Tato, I think, barely reseeded. Okay, so one, two, three. So we reseeded three farms. Four, five, six, seven, okay, eight. Eight in the last four minutes. That's okay ish. Tedo built more than that. Hmm. He also had three more farms before. Ha! Huh. Not easy to say. And now four monks against two on the field, three at the front against one, twelve knights against eight knights. And monks are just so crazy good in those scenarios. Now everything is reset. Slightly better eco, 3 TC. Only now 3rd TC for Leary. Maybe I undervalue the strengths of Franks.
Also taking the fight without a single relic in the center of the map. Yeah, in game should be over here. Two relics, two neutral ones. Here we're now adding stables. Gold exposed, pike switch already in. Monk count crazy. Nice interception in the back here. It doesn't really matter. Military wise, just too far ahead. Huh. Chat, let's help me. Or oh, uh, help me. Is it horse color plus three deer plus berry bonus? Are those three factors enough? Plus save bloodlines? Hmm. Plus heavy plow? Yeah, I think heavy when heavy plow kicked in, I think the game was kind of already over. Mm. Or at least a huge favorite favor for Tato there. Sick. A lot of food in feudal. Okay, let's maybe the moment Tato clicks up, let's take a look at gathered resources. Okay, 230. Statistic, economy. Teddo is behind in gathered resources. <laughs> How are we explaining this? Lyria has 500 more wood though. And had to invest that heavily into farms, right? We had 21 farms and only 14 farms. Sick! That's the major difference. Seven? That's basically 420 burned resources. Huh. Frank should start with horse color on those farms, I believe. Yeah, 250. I oh, see 175. Sick. So it was just Tedo not being forced into that much farming. Therefore, Liri's extra resor uh, collected resources were invested into farms. I honestly, like, I don't want to, like, get too, too dramatic here. But it might have been the three deer. To zero Tato. Next was Morus, I believe, right? Let me see. Uh, it was Morus, yep. Foy oy oy. Yeah, with three deer, Liri could have delayed some farms. Yeah, at least three, right? Okay, so. We have the archer range opening and Tato plays a strategy that was kind of already shown and I was a bit surprised that he went for it. The double barracks approach um, with Bulgarians can be really nice if the opponent doesn't know it, if the opponent gets surprised, if they aren't making the right steps. Obviously that man at arm go in, going into the wrong direction didn't help either. Plus Liri instant defensive tower. Did Liri scout the second barracks? Yes, he did. He did scout the second barracks, instant tower, full archer with fletching. Liri is doing all the right moves here um, for the defense. Fights with the villagers against the scout. Hmm. Did the men at arm win even once? I don't think so. I did not see all games though. Maybe someone at Akama. Hmm. Yeah, Lyric could have done a bit of a better job, like trying to wall, but this is obviously a really ugly area to control. And Archers are now getting lots of control. I think the KD early feudal already was really, really good. And now the stable behind this, I think. Tedo needed a tower. Went for quite some nice harassment here. Tedo. 
Technically, Jordan won against Ogao, but I think that was not because of the strategy. Um, and now the archers are just dominating everything. Yeah. KD is actually reasonably close. I'm a bit surprised. 11 to 9. But also here, I think there should be a big difference in resource income already, right? Economy. Yeah, look at that. Lyria has plus 500 resources. In this early stage, 20% more resources, basically. Yeah, that's just... Allows him to get more upgrades. Allows him to get a bigger army. Both are forced into a defensive tower. Yeah, crazy advantage here for Leary. Um, yeah, just nice scouting by Leary. Instant reaction. And maybe just anticipating what Tedder was going for, right? Because it was a strategy that was already shown. Uh, I think Jordan played it against Togao. And there it worked okay-ish, I believe. Hmm. Second Rex. Well, you have the Men at Arm upgrade for free. You can get armor really cheaply. Uh, yeah. And Liri can just fish. I think he should not have the Villagers on Berries as long as he controls the Shorefish. Tedal now goes into Bloodlines, but Liri already realizes I forced so much army. You have to continue producing. I'm just walling off. Everything walled here. Really nice map control by him. And he knows this is the only angle that can be attacked. Even continues to war more. Hmm. Why do that instead of just going for range and do men at arms plus skirm instead? Feels much more forcing than just men at arms with armor. It's easier to micro and men at arms skirm die to one scout, right? One scout can always be annoying and can harass quite a bit. So it becomes tricky. But yeah, Minute Arms Skirm is, is an okay strategy as well. It just also allows you to put on even more pressure, right? Because the archers have to defend at the start. And if the opponent doesn't have a tower early on, then you most of the time find quite some good defense. Oh, like push them into the defense is what I meant. Why do we not fight here? I think Liri could have built it. Oh no, he couldn't. Pulled a tower on the way. Tedo in an okay -ish spot, but obviously army wise, so far behind. Loses more builds, loses shorefish control as well. Fought scouts against Light Calf here. And game is over. Men at arms. Um, do you, I think you simply need to have a bit of a surprise factor if you play a double man at arm. Liri just had the perfect defense with the instant archer range, instant stable as well to scout, to punish skirms potentially, and then the instant defensive tower. Then it becomes really tricky. A N I L I S Y S Pog. Hey, yo, Debbie. Yeah, and Leary takes it to one, which brings us to game four, the bull. I'm not sure if I remember what's happened there. Let's take a look. A N I L I S Y S squared poggers. Magistone, ayo. So stable opening against archer range opening, berry front against gold front. And instant villager to the front. Also really interesting. Wants to tower the gold here potentially. Obviously the strategy that worked so well for Capoch against Stout. Right, so maybe that's something that they really Oh man, was that a final. Thanks for the great show and the good talk afterwards. Spoxman. Neely love, Neely love, Neely love. Thank you. Trying to get those walls up. Should always work, but oh, villager loss potentially. And Tedder was surely slipping up. This is where we say Liri is the best in the world, right? 3-1 KD, harassment, berry push as well. That villager, I think, got saved. Did he not die later on against the Spearman? I think so, yeah. That is a tiny mistake by Tedder, obviously. Well, happens. 
And Tato now floating lots of gold. Fish not really running, but we already have it running on the other side. Villagers around. Just such a good opening. I think on this map, if you open stable, I think you might need to wall even earlier. Like stable here and already start to build palisades. Just makes your life easier. Just imagine, like, where's the first attack coming? It's not over here. First attack is coming here. And Tato is now walling with three builds, but not prioritizing enough. And then it just gets ugly, right? Because scouts can't really join the fight against spearmen that early. Hmm. Do you think Turks are the best Civ on this map? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they are top five. Yeah, and I think prioritization mistake here by Tato, maybe walling wise. And then it becomes really tricky already. Tato deep in Feudal Age, Leary already thinking about castling here. Four workers behind. This is still raidable. Walls already set up. And Tato late with everything. I think. Let me quickly take a look at how Hera played it. Uh, in his game against Mr. Yo, right? Winner match, Hera, Yo, Bull. How quickly he walled. Sick that I was casting it. Don't remember. Mm, whoopsie. Uh, ah, yeah, Hera. Ah, we jumped into the game really late, right? Rogan? Ah, yeah, okay. People got mad. Um, but yeah, you see, at 3 minutes 30, Hera is fully walled at the top. The tower is there at the gold. Sadly, we don't see pre um, the, the start in the, of this game. Uh... Yeah, but you also see how Mr. Yo, how late this villager is out, right? 3.30 the tower. Well, in this game, we see that the villager was out here at like, what was it, like two minutes? Look, at two minutes, the house is ready. The villager moved out basically at 50 seconds. It's already ready to build a tower if we had the gold at the front. So that timing is even way better by Leary compared to what Yo did. Yeah, and I think Tato was already in a pretty bad spot here. You think Turks are an optimal shift to go hyper aggro with? Uh, not having a lead skirm can sometimes hurt. Sack, uh. Nottery, thank you for the sub. Mm. Imagine this game also starting at 3.30 in this stream. One minute castle age advantage, Spearman out, gets control over that front area, top area. And Tato, he can only go for gold, right? Uh, can only go for light calf here, because he won't have gold control in the long run. Now goes for Janissaries, interesting choice. And obviously like this double over chop hurts so much, right? It's still an absolutely playable game here. You are behind... Oh, barely behind. Only one worker. Eco upgrades. You're behind one. That's that's a totally fine spot. Obviously, lots of resources are getting burned by using the market. But then Janissaries can just dictate the game. This is probably what's made it so rough for Tello. Like the double overchop here. And then he did some okay quick walls, but that was uh, didn't go 100%. This is tricky now. Could have maybe built a villager there. Very easy for me to say how he could have prevented this and how it's easier to quick wall. It's on the big stage. It's hectic. And even if he's playing from home, you can screw those up. Now he goes into Janissaries, but is 14 builds behind. Plus a super efficient TC behind. So that makes it tricky. Yeah. Tato still plays one town center. Now the aggression at the top. And this is, I believe, where Tato still has a chance to win. But those Janissary numbers must never die. 
This is this is where he has to snowball. This is where he has to kill the Byzantine player. And we take a look at this fight now. And those camels, I think they just need to take the fight. They're trying to help out, but Janissaries are dying here. Camels in the back, getting okay-ish fight in. And the game was over here. Because now we are basically reset in Janissary counts. Knights can take good fights. While well, we had 20 villagers behind here being Tato. And Tato is still killing a bit. I think those needed to be together as well with a big fight. So what we needed was a scout here or an outpost here. Just to get some idea, right? Because Tato, he was basically blind. Right? This light calf needs to be here. And if he sees the knights coming here, 11, uh, 12 knights, 1 camel, he goes on that hill, camels are protecting, janissaries are shooting, he won't split those two off, and then Tedder wins this. Oh no, does doesn't win this, but isn't getting cleared up. Clear up obviously means GG. They're just too far ahead in economy to ever get a chance here. Game 5. I think that was the Schultz game, right? Schultz game. Fun story. The Stugat, thanks for the sub. Mm. Italians, uh, Sif that we practiced on in the boot camp, and Taro actually played Italians, tried this exactly with the condo timing. And Leary and Tato played exactly this matchup against each other in practice, like one day before the tournament. Reverse sifts. And Tato won with Bohemians. He played full Arbalest and but said Leary played it wrong. I don't know how this game went, but that's why Leary probably had way more confidence in this matchup than he should have. Because it's not easy to get the full control here, right? Really plays a good opening, kills fishing ships, makes it tricky. Now both players cast it at the same time. Still going for some archers. Beautiful situation for Leary here, right? Better economy on water. Gets onto the units that he wants to anyways. This is so good for Leary. Now it's farms with the farm upgrade as well. Should be happy. Obviously this demo quite cute can't really commit there and going back now the major mistake that Leary did is probably not booming enough adding some more farms here but yeah this is oh okay this is getting cleared up okay that makes sense obviously cheaper for Tato and now the third town center out here and Tato said when he saw those villagers he didn't know wow are you going for your fourth TC already? You're obviously at water. And then he sends this light cav in and CCs only two town centers. And then he knew how far ahead he was. So this one was really good for Tello. Obviously gets a snipe here. And this one at the top confirms, wow, you don't have a town center here. So this is your third. And now Tedo knew that he was heavily ahead in the economy. And he knew, okay, my condo timing is going to be good. So what Lyric could have done here is potentially be out earlier with those builds, right? Because when is he investing those resources? He's investing them now, 1035, basically. And when is he finishing that town or when is he starting to build that town center? Really late. He is only Morgan. starting at 11.55. So a minute 20 seconds later, so that could have been three more villagers as well. Right? TC is up three villagers earlier, can be produced. And Taro obviously gets lots and lots of intel. So that was really nice for him. And yeah, as I said, this is a strategy where Tedo knew exactly what to play. 
You cannot play with Nietzsche here, probably. You cannot probably uh, play Hand Cannoneer simply because those condos are just too strong. You have to play Arbalest. And that's ugly, right? Because Arbalest, if you have 40 here, 10 here, he will overwhelm you at the top. If you try to split 25 25, that's going to be tricky. Red Bull flying in. Uh, we just uh, did some uh, small sell off behind the scenes. Um, looking at the finals. Thanks for the 20 gifted subs there. And obviously, all the shenanigans that are happening here are really irrelevant. Uh, yeah, thanks for hosting arguably the best uh, HM Press tournament uh, ever. Cheers, Arena. Uh, so good that even a week after, I still want to watch the rewatch the games. And this was interesting to me that Tato actually decided to go for the top and try to contest that. Although he should know that he might have the better imp timing and knows that Liri is at the goal tier. I would have expected him to go in that area. Maybe he didn't want to contest the outpost. This was a really good clear up as well and very necessary. Although Caster said, oh god, demos were you uh, lost and some uh, ships were lost as well. But made lots of sense because that allowed the Cannon Galleons to be uncontested here. Right? Cannon Galleons, you only need chemistry. We're going for chemistry anyways. Really good. And now it just becomes pain. I think there's an option which sounds horrible. Yeah, it even sounds impossible. To be fully walled and try to play Arbalest on one side. But I think then you're just getting wrecked at home. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah, Arbalest are good against Condos. But with what numbers? Pavis flying in for Condos as well. Some solid armor. So five damage going through and this was a beautiful raid. This is just this is what makes it so painful to play against those right condo solid movement speed Liri actually does the right thing gets the defensive castle gets the conversion still super annoying Oh, didn't even get the conversion, but still so super annoying work efficiencies should go down for Liri and Now this is what we said like cannon galleons can dictate everything because this one got cleared up no try to retake the uh, the water. I wouldn't even know how bohemian water looks. Condos are so good. In those spots, they are cer certainly are. Yeah. Hand cannon defense doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, maybe sitting on the castle, it does. Now more condo aggression. And as I said, like just the playability, right? I think if like two AIs are playing against each other. This is actually a closer spot for the Bohemian player. But with two humans and even Leary, arguably one of the best to ever touch the game. It's still impossible to micro this perfectly. And the raid in the center. Plus you're scared that another trap is going over here and this is happening. So like the constant back micro that you normally see on Arabia out of Leary. Like moving back, killing a condo after killing a condo. Is simply not an option because this is so open and so unwallable, right? And you even see Tedo mix uh, slipping up a bit here with his cannon galleons. We have too many fights on different angles, and I honestly believe Bohemians struggle a lot against Italians. I think they have a lot of good matchups on this map. I think they perform well against Poles, good uh, Charas. I'm not too sure. Um, but obviously, like, beating Vikings, what are the good shifts? I don't even know. But this is, I think, impossible to win from here. So Leary, late third town center, crossbows didn't do anything. Maybe? Did Leary maybe need an aggressive siege workshop? Because look at the land army, it's two light calf against eight crossbows, right? If we have a siege workshop here, we can pressure a bit. If we have a siege workshop here, we can pressure a bit. And then Ted was pushed away from this gold as well. I think maybe Leary needed a siege workshop. Hmm. Avengal is an option on this map. 
Uh, eco bonus is not that big. I think healing on water is irrelevant. Or, or not irrelevant, but not that big. I think you don't have a timing to contest the sites. Right? The timing for Bohemians is better because you get chemistry. Basic, or get access to Bombard Cannon once you reach Imp. For Italians, because you get there earlier. And the condos are so good and mobile. Hmm. I think the forward TC is just super weird. I think as we even need to grab this in some form. Also, he obviously slows himself down going on to stone that heavily. Yeah. Maybe the castle needs to be more aggressively then. Where did we have the castle? Ah, oh, we built it at the top. Hmm. Maybe just try to full stonewall everything. Build like two defensive castles at home. And try to push like Hoof Nietzsche, Arbalest one direction. Oof. Turks are also an option. And I've seen Turks being played on this map in practice games. Yeah, yeah. Turks are absolutely an option on this map. And Taro takes it. 3 2. Condos just dominating everything. As we said, like macro is tricky at all spots here. How good are Portuguese on this map? No good imp timing. Water helps you a bit. I think. Like number 15, vielleicht. Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think they are super crazy. Yeah. Thank you, Red Bull, again for the 20 gifted subs and the great tournament. Hope you got the numbers and the reward that you're aiming for with this tournament. And raids are just so good here. Impossible for Liri to deal with this. Which puts us into game 6. The game of mind games. Liri goes for his first pick against Tedos. How many pick? Okay, three and a half. Okay. And we see Tero opening with the stable. And Leary opening with an archer range. House is making it a bit weird, bit awkward for him to control this properly. House here as well. Palisade goes for eagle and archer skirm. Looked like he was housed there for a second. Is fully walled and Tero gets lots of control out. Uh, villager here. Probably didn't realize the hole. Oh yeah, okay, all fixed. And now this just becomes full mind games, right? Leary clearly expected to face archers. What was Leary scouting like? Uh, oh no, what? What am I doing? Uh, this. Uh... I have no idea how to switch players. Ah. This is the confidence of a player who either thinks they are way better or they have the better Sif. Right, this walling at home. Not trying to find out what the opponent is going for. Because now we built two skirms. That do zero in this scenario. And even queue up more skirms. Three skirms that achieve absolutely nothing. Four skirms even. Delaying the castle age timing. And Tedo now goes for four walls. And now the mind games are starting. And Tado, he is now, this is a brilliant move by him. And this is something how you can trick your opponent as well. What is Tatars going for now? And only people that didn't see the game are allowed to answer. Indeed. CA. Calf archers for Tatars just feel so good. We have lots of hills here. 
on the areas. That's even a weird map generation, but okay. Um, and Tato, he's only showing scouts with bloodlines. Only bloodlines. Bloodlines also help CA. And if you wanted to go for knights or step lances, you would upgrade your units more, right? So he intentionally delayed the upgrades for his stable units. Just to screw with Leary's head. And now armor finishes and now he cleans this one up. And now this becomes ugly. And Leary sits at home quite nicely. But obviously skirms achieve nothing. And now the first big engagement and it's just so easy for Tato to dictate how he wants to fight. Finds the monk kill, clears up the eagles. Look at the KD, 9 to 2. Obviously, 4 skirms not the most important thing. And this is so easy to micro now with step lenses. And this is also a strategy we have prepared in the bootcamp. Or like, have prepared, let's say, something that Tato played in the bootcamp. So, I think the bootcamp was actually less efficient than the one for Red Bull 5. But two great strategies came out of it, and obviously Tato the crazy transition uh, in the other games as well like lots of strengths there so yeah i was actually when i saw game five and six i felt like wow the boot camp really paid off but now leary is basically playing against a unit that he doesn't really know how strong they are right fighting on the hill crazy damage output all of a sudden, it's instead of 9, it's uh, 13 and a half. And you really don't want to fight against that. Those are obviously like really fortunate scenarios as well. Killing all four monks, only getting one step lancer converted. Uh, yeah, dealt with the raids quite nicely. But Tello, just absolutely crazy. Goes for the fourth town center, adds more stables. And Tello taking $60,000 there and the Red Bull crown. Whew. Any last questions? Otherwise, uh, we can do the outro here. Add some archery range as well, because he's obviously expecting full monk and pikeman now. So prepared for that switch. 20 on gold as well. Wouldn't be surprised if he even sends more pretty soon. Needs to expand quite a bit as well. What sh unit should Leary go for? I think he should have a better timing in Castle Age. Uh, like the four skirms already slowed him down. If he has like full pikeman, monk, and some siege, then it gets really ugly for Tero. Right? Just imagine a push here, siege workshop, and pike monk pushing into his gold. One monk, like, or some push over here as well, like pushing this area from siege workshop here. And then it becomes ugly. But here, Tato was just so able to constantly decide where to fight. Also, I think expanding here... At one point, you have to. And this is obviously the castle of TG. I'm not sure if we should start it, but I wouldn't mind if we in the future call this castle Tato Castle. The castle that... Yeah. Ondo always calls get, get out of my game, Castle. Economy obviously way better. And step lenses. Once you get into those numbers, you can't do much against that. Was the remainder of Ed 6 this tournament? Felt like they got banned or lost. Uh, they won at least one game, Viper against Leary. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. We can look them up later. But okay, that's it from me. I hope uh, you learned something, you got some better ideas. And that's it from me. Goodbye. Have a lovers.